He's a Heisman winner and two-time national champion. Tim Tebow has made it to the pros, even though he almost didn't make it out of the womb. It really was um, just the grace of God that pulled me through. Hear the rest of his story on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. It happened in Sacramento, California. A young girl taken away from her mother, haven't been heard of again, as I understand. They call this modern-day slavery, and every year millions of men, women, and children become the victims of what is known as human trafficking. Now, many people think that's just an international problem, but as Pat mentioned, right here in America, it's happening. In Sacramento alone, authorities have rescued hundreds of victims. Heather Sells has more. <sighs> Vicki Zito's teenage daughter had gone to the grocery store with a friend for a soda when she was kidnapped in the parking lot. Eight days later, she got a call from the FBI. I learned that within hours of being taken, my daughter had been drugged and raped by her perpetrator. Within 24 hours of my daughter being gone, she was being re repeatedly sold for sex. Like so many other smaller communities, the horrors of trafficking have hit Sacramento, California. But the city is fighting back. In the last five years, authorities have rescued some 200 children. Recently, Congressman Dan Lundgren held a field briefing to rally support. Before it began, Lundgren showed this 700 Club interview with activist actress Ashley Judd. What Americans may not realize is that the slave trade right now is far greater than it ever was at its very height in the 19th century. Sacramento is reaping the benefits of an FBI trafficking task force. It has arrested close to 100 pimps since it started five years ago. We will win this battle, but we only will win it when local, state, and federal law enforcement organizations combine their efforts. Local citizens like Jenny Williamson are also making a difference. She will soon open a home to care for victims. If they pick up a young girl tonight on a sting operation, she will be put in handcuffs and she will be taken to juvenile hall. Zito says she never thought trafficking would happen to her family. I would like other parents to know that this is real and that it is happening probably in a neighborhood near them, if not in their neighborhood. But she hopes her story will sound the alarm for other young girls and inspire others to take action. Heather Sells, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. Uh, I want to correct the fact that they did find the young lady and found out some of the horror that she'd been through. Some of them are still missing. They, they don't know where they are. And some of them, they, they take them and sell them overseas. And then the, from that moment, they're, they're, they're gone. Well, we've been hearing about this over the last yeah. decade or two, more and more. But I think it's happening to younger and younger girls, as she said, in neighborhoods near you. Terry, there's something inside of me that rises up against these pimps that are profiting uh, on the misery of these girls. And I would, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to put the death penalty on for those people. I, I tell you, we, we ought to make it really, really tough. And we ought to have all hands on deck. We, we've looked at it as a, quote, victimless crime. And they say, well, the girls really want to do it and so forth. They don't want to be put into slavery and forced to have sex with 10 or 12 men a night and starve. It's pure profit. It's oh, it's, just it's about hideous. The money. It's hideous. And uh, uh, these people are horrible, and they, 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 they're, they're gangs from Russia and the, uh, the old uh, East Bloc countries that are involved. They're gangs in, the, in Asia, and, and of course, we've got gangs in America. I'm shocked about Sacramento, but apparently that's become a focal point of this kind of track. But just imagine, you take your daughter to the mall, and she wants to go off and look at a pair of shoes someplace. The next thing you know, she's gone. She's gone, yeah. And, and what they do is they can hit them with a drug real fast, knock them out, and then they say, well, this is my daughter. Now, she just had a fainting spell, and I've got to take her to a doctor. And, you know, out they go. Yeah. Well, and I'm so glad to hear that there are people who are doing something mm. about the girls afterwards because it's very hard for them to come back and just assimilate into normal life after something like that. A mandatory death penalty, and maybe those guys would start behaving themselves. Well, so much for blood and gore. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories in the CBN newsroom. Lee? 
Pat, the House of Representatives is voting on America's debt ceiling today. Lawmakers are expected to reject an attempt to raise that ceiling by $2.4 trillion. That's because the plan contains no spending cuts. The president has invited all House Republicans to meet with him at the White House tomorrow. And House Speaker John Boehner wants to prove in advance that the debt limit will not be increased without major cuts. Gas prices are falling for now, but some major Wall Street firms believe oil prices will start rising again, and that will lead to $5 a gallon gas. Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase are looking for oil to rise as much as $135 a barrel for British oil, and that would also mean a big price increase for American oil. Pat, what do you think about that prediction? I think it probably is low. Uh, before they're finished, uh, we're going to see uh, gasoline uh, uh, crude selling at $300 a barrel. We've been looking at $10 a, a gallon. $10 uh, $10 a gallon? Yes. Well, in Europe, it's almost that now. Wow. They get used to it. Um, it be a long time well, before a, we get used to that. You water way off Yemen. What is it? Dab El Mandab where the, uh, it's very highly exposed uh, to gunfire of any kind. A silkworm missile blows out a, a, a tanker because they're not armed and they're slow. They move up into this tightly congested waterway off the coast of Yemen. Yemen is in, in chaos right now. Uh, if al-Qaeda takes that over, all it takes is a silkworm missile and you shut that down. Three million barrels a day. Then if they close up the Straits of Hormuz coming out the other way, or they shut down the Saudi pipelines, which is what uh, uh, the goal has been of al-Qaeda a long time, is to stop the flow of uh, uh, Saudi crude into the West. If that happens, it, it wouldn't be any stretch to figure that um, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten million barrels a day is taken off the market. And when that happens, three hundred dollars a barrel. It will happen if this chaos continues. Okay. Hey, I'm not very happy that. Yeah, really? I mean, could you... it's a happy time. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. Let's review yeah, this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forgive me for telling the truth, Lee. Pat, Egypt has opened its borders with Gaza. That move seen as a gesture by the new Egyptian government towards Hamas, and it heralds closer ties with the terrorist organization. Israel fears the new opening will let more terrorist and weapons get into Gaza. For years, Hamas has used an elaborate tunnel system like this one to smuggle weapons, and that's allowed them and other terrorist groups to fire thousands of rockets and mortars into Israel. A Houston pastor won the right to use Jesus' name in a, in a Memorial Day ceremony. A federal judge issued an order preventing officials at Houston's National Cemetery from censoring his prayer. Charlene Israel has that story. The Reverend Scott Rainey has given the invocation at a Memorial Day service at the Houston National Cemetery the last two years. But this year, the Veterans Administration ordered him to remove the name of Jesus from his prayer. Rainey and the Liberty Institute went to court. They argued the government couldn't restrict private speech even on public land. I have never said a prayer in my life where I didn't end it by saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. And so it was, it was an unrealistic expectation. U.S. District Court Judge Lynn Hughes agreed. Hughes said the Constitution does not give the government the authority to compel emptiness in a prayer where a prayer belongs. After the ruling, attorneys for the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs changed their position on the case. Clearly, Judge Hughes is following the law. Uh, it is very clear that a pastor has a right as a private citizen to speak his mind freely and not have the government censor or edit the content of his speech. A private group asked Pastor Rainey to give the invocation, something he's done for the past two years, using the words Jesus Christ both times. Cemetery officials have issued a statement on the case saying national cemeteries cannot be exclusive but must be inclusive for all veterans. Charlene Israel, CBN News. One Houston TV station reports clergy have offered prayers during that Memorial Day ceremony at that cemetery for about 30 years. The number of people unaccounted for after last week's tornado in Joplin, Missouri is down to 29. Officials are not certain, though, of the death toll, but the number of remains they found is 146. The twister destroyed nearly a third of that city. About 20,000 residents are still without homes. Operation Blessing, though, is there helping them clean up.
We have coordinated over 400 volunteers just this Memorial Day weekend, and we've been sending them out doing chainsaw work, using our loader and our heavy equipment to help people remove debris from their house that would cost them thousands of dollars to do. And most importantly, we've been going and talking to residents, sharing the love of Christ, putting arms around them, hugging them, and just listening to their story. And we have seen time and time again how they have went from feeling hopeless and down to feeling hope, joy, and like they can rebuild their lives. Hmm. One Joplin resident says Operation Blessing has reminded her of God's love in the face of tragedy. And Pat, as you know, they've been in Tuscaloosa for several weeks. Now they've gone to Joplin to, to just love on the people there. Uh, Lee, this may be one of the worst series. I, as far as I can tell, there were more uh, tornadoes during the uh, month of May than any other month, uh, I believe, in American history. I don't want to overstate that, but it's certainly in, in recent memory. And uh, the devastation has been unbelievable. What's happening in the weather, we're not sure. But Operation Blessing is there to help. Here's what's been going on. They, they've been having a s distribution center at the Bridge Youth Center in Joplin. They're giving out food, bedding, uh, diapers, hygiene items, and um, they're assisting residents with debris removal. So if you want to help, Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund, CBN Center. You know, <clears throat> when you see disasters of this nature, it tears your heart. And, I, you know, you ask the Lord, what can I do? Well, in order to enjoy the blessing we have in this land, I think we've got to help those less fortunate, whether it's here in this country or overseas, and to reach out a hand of compassion in places like Joplin and what's happening in Tuscaloosa and other parts of this country. The people are very generous. And from the bounty that is in our hands, we need to make sure we help those less fortunate. That debris removal is so important. I mean, you, when you watch oh, yeah. that on TV, you just think, how do you ever get rid of all of that? Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. So to, for the people even to see the hope of a new beginning, a new tomorrow, we need to get rid Assume of that. Assume you're a widow and you have two or three children and you live in a small house and a big tree falls on your house. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, what do you do? Well, Operation Blessing comes in and says, we'll take the tree off. We've got uh, machinery. We've got uh, uh, chainsaws. We've got, the, you know, the, the front end loaders and things. We'll lift that tree and we'll fix it. Then we'll give you something to help repair the roof. We're not doing full scale, but we're, we're helping people get back to their lives. Mm -hmm. There's a great guy in, <clears throat> in, in college sports um, he won the Heisman Trophy. He was a role model, and everybody just thought he was the greatest. Great big guy, big quarterback, but uh, a massive heart. <laughs> big, talented quarterback. Well, coming up, NFL quarterback Tim Tebow is playing the toughest position in sports. When you're in the huddle, all of, all of those 10 guys are looking at you, and it's your responsibility, and if you fail, it's on you, not on anyone else. And I just kind of love that pressure about it. Find out how he handles that pressure later on today's show. Plus, our chat room is open and we want to hear from you. We're going to bring it online with your questions and comments, so don't go away. Go to the chat room. Coming up, an ancient prediction. There will be uh, the attack on the two great Christian capitals. And the man who tried to make it a reality. He was a follower of Sharia law, very definitely. How Muslims are still trying to fulfill this prophecy more than 500 years later. Islam will conquer the universe. That is their goal. Hi there, neighbor. Pat Boone here from my good friends at Swiss America, the company that makes retirement dreams come true with gold. A lot of folks are shifting a portion of their retirement funds into a new precious metals IRA with Swiss America. And since 2004, these IRAs are up in value over 150%. I've been a very satisfied client of Swiss America for many years now because they believe in honesty, fair prices, and superior service. It's time to put your financial future on a gold standard right now. I own gold because it's a hedge of protection for my family. Even my grandkids can see that our paper money is becoming less valuable every day. So call or visit Swiss America now. Ask for the Pat Boone free DVD and gold IRA kit. Get the best education you can on gold. The best asset to own during these uncertain times. Call or visit online now. 
tomorrow. Have you ever felt defeated? You're not alone. Now find out how to fight back using the laws of the secret kingdom. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. And if you do, you will win. Plus, they call him Mr. Pure Energy. Filipino pop sensation Gary Valenciano joins us live tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, recent protests in the Arab world have been fueled by a radical Islamic cleric named Yusuf al-Karadawi, Karadawi, a leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. One thing he preaches is the conquest of Europe through conversion. He bases that message on a prophecy given by Muhammad, who said that Islam will capture the world's two Christian capitals, first Constantinople and then Rome. The first part of that prophecy was fulfilled more than 500 years ago this week. In May 1453, the Ottoman Turks captured Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Gordon Robertson looks at the events that led to that city's fall and the prophecy that still inspires Muslims today.
putting that together, that gives you a little feeling of what's happening. But uh, the Muslim conquest of Constantinople was only the first part of Muhammad's prophecy. The next step was to conquer Rome. And while the idea of Muslims taking over the city may seem far-fetched, Rome, get this, is now the site of the largest mosque in Europe. And as Dale Hurd reports, it's one of many mega mosques being built across the European continent. Mosheo di Roma, the Great Mosque of Rome, shown in this video by the architect Paolo Portoghese. It is the largest mosque in Europe with room for 12,000 worshippers, and it is a powerful symbol for Italy's fast-growing Muslim population, shown here praying illegally in the streets of Rome. Large mosques have been built or are on the drawing board in virtually every major city in Europe. The skyline of Cologne, Germany has been dominated for centuries by its famous cathedral, the largest Gothic church in Northern Europe. But soon this church will share the skyline with the 150-foot tall minarets of this mosque, now under construction. The Cologne Mosque, which is being funded by the government of Turkey, is opposed by groups who see it as a piece of Turkish territory in the heart of Germany. This mosque is a symbol of political power. Uh, this is a symbol of Islamization in the central of Europe, and sp especially this mosque in Cologne Ehrenfeld. In fact, many of the large mosque projects in Europe are funded by the Turkish government, some by the Saudis. This one planned for Copenhagen is being built with money from Iran's Revolutionary Guard. It's not really a mosque, it's, it's more like a barracks. It's going to be an institution uh, that will terrorize not only Danes, but primarily non-obedient uh, Iranians. In London, a plan to build a mega mosque, the largest in Europe, ran into strong public opposition and has been downsized. But in Cologne and other cities, the left wing has shown itself to be very pro-mosque and sometimes demonstrates violently against mosque opponents. The Great Mosque of Rome and the growing number of giant mosques across Europe are changing not only the physical landscape, experts say they're likely to change the political landscape as well. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Incredible, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? It's happening before your eyes. I was thinking today, why don't we make an offer to the Saudis? We want to build a really big church in the heart of Riyadh. And, uh, well, you know, there are a group of uh, American and European Christians that would like to build a Christian center that would hold 10,000 people right in the center of Riyadh. See how far that baby gets. Then you begin to see what we're dealing with. Yes, they will come into Europe and, and build their mosque. Yes, they'll come into America and set up their uh, schools and madrasas. But try to do something in their part of the world and see what happens. They want expansion. Anybody who thinks this is some kind of a civil right, I was thinking, you know, if you oppose Muslims, well, what is said? Well, you're a bigot, right? Yeah, exactly. Terrible bigotry. I wonder what were people who, who opposed the Nazis? Were they bigots? Well, in that day, I think they were looked down upon and frowned upon. You know, when you see that street in Rome, people bowing toward yeah. Mecca, and <clears throat> it's illegal, and nothing's being done about it. But, but why can't we speak out against a, an institution that is, is intent on dominating us and imposing Sharia law and making us all part of a universal caliphate? That's their, the goal of some of these people. Why is that bigoted? Why is it bigoted to, to resist Adolf Hitler and the Nazis and to say we don't want to live under Nazi Germany? Uh, <clears throat> we didn't hesitate to, to say the, the truth Tell the truth about the Nazis, tell the truth about Hitler, tell the truth about fascism, tell the truth, if you will, about communism. But, oh, it's bigoted if we speak out against a force that is slowly but surely trying to exercise domination over the world. Read the book, the Koran, that's what it says. Exactly right. Well, for more information, on the spread of Islam in Europe and the fall of Constantinople, log on to our website, cbn.com. And while you're there, you can see more stories about church history and biblical archaeology that I think you'll find fascinating. Well, up next, as a championship-winning quarterback, Tim Tebow is a leader on the field and off it. 
I had that opportunity to go into hospitals and talk to kids and, and see a kid and make him smile. Why? Because I'm a special person? No. It has everything to do with, with me being a quarterback at the University of Florida. And, and, and to not take advantage of that is a shame. Our exclusive interview with the former Heisman winner is next, so don't go away. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come sail the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calmed a raging storm. Experience Jerusalem, where Jesus restored a paralyzed man. Explore Capernaum, where Jesus spoke a centurion servant into health. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit GoIsrael.com. Come visit Israel. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. He had a fabulous career at the University of Florida, Heisman Trophy winner. Tim Tebow has started in just three games in the NFL, NFL, and yet he's one of the biggest stars in the sport. Recently, he sat down with sports reporter Sean Brown to talk about his career, his faith, and the platform it gives him.
guy. What an incredible athlete, but more than anything, he loves Jesus. He found him. But, you know, he, he was so motivated. That's the thing. You can start life when you're young, six years old. You make a decision. stays with you all your life. Then you get the love of a particular sport and it stays with you all your life. It's, it's amazing. But uh, a great man. He's written a book. He has written a book. You can want to check it out. It's called Through My Eyes, and you're going to love it. It's available in stores nationwide. We also have an extended interview with him on our website, which you can watch by going to CBN.com, so you don't want to miss out on that. Well, still ahead, it's a rare sight at a public school, a Bible club on campus. 43 kids in a high school accepting Christ in front of all their peers during the school day. That doesn't happen anywhere else. Find out what makes this club the most popular one on campus when we return. Got a question for Pat? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room later on today's 700 Club. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried, and I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there, I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. Planned Parenthood has filed a lawsuit to stop a South Dakota law. The law would require women seeking abortions to wait three days and undergo counseling at pregnancy help centers. The law goes into effect July 1st. Meanwhile, some Democratic senators want to prevent states from cutting Planned Parenthood's funding. They say states that try to cut the funding should face federal penalties. A Korean American has been set free after six months in a North Korean prison. Eddie Chun joined U.S. convoy Robert King at the Pyongyang airport for the flight home. North Korean authorities say Chun committed a serious crime against North Korea, but never gave specifics. South Korean newspapers reported the California businessman was accused of spreading Christianity. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club is already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items, like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Well, school Bible clubs face many challenges these days, from student apathy to questions over its legality. But that's not the case at one Pennsylvania school. 
two-thirds of the student body there is lining up for the weekly meetings. Paul Strand has the story. So many kids come to Red Bank Valley High School's Bible Club, they're claiming it's the world's largest at any public school. Five years ago when they started, club leaders hit on a wildly winning formula. Being a Christian is fun. It's the best way to go. So we're like, let's bring some fun into the community. Go! They spend hours making sure the Monday morning meetings entertain and appeal to kids. Like It's not like going to church and just sitting there and listening to a lesson. We get games and activities and videos. Here's one skit where Jesus tries to get two Christian kids to stop acting so hyper-religious. Love thy neighbor as thyself, for your love is deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Hey! And they present a loving message. Obviously, God is the best person to cling to. And so I think when they're looking for something to cling to and we're like, hey, there's somebody that loves you and somebody who cares for you. I mean, that's the whole deal right there. We've actually had some salvation lessons and people have come to Christ through what we're teaching them. Between third period and fourth period, this is what goes on. Maggie McCauley told us about the day paramedics staged a rescue by rushing in the school to save a student. At which point, then 15-year-old Maggie gave a lesson saying, there were different ways that we could save lives physically, but the only way that we can really save your life spiritually is by bringing you to God. Then Maggie led a prayer for salvation and dozens of hands went up. 43 kids in a high school accepting Christ in front of all their peers during the school day. That doesn't happen anywhere else. Jesus calls us to go everywhere and to spread his word. And I know that public school is the best place because you're with all your friends and everybody's, you know, there's different cliques going on. And if we can all come together as one and be the body of Christ, that's, that's an amazing thing. Many Christian students probably feel they couldn't do something like this in their school, but the kids here at Red Bank Valley point out this is your constitutional right. You have the freedom to talk about God and enjoy Him every day no matter where you are, and that includes school. The club kids are careful. They make sure no teacher or school official runs these religious gatherings. It's totally student-led and we do the lessons all ourselves and the prayers and everything like that. And now they're taking all this outside Red Bank to help other neighboring schools get Bible clubs going. It's nice to see, you know, other, other schools that didn't think they could do it to begin with and now they are. And back in their own school. We have some Bibles to hand out, so does anybody want a Bible? The clubs work with the community to buy thousands of dollars worth of Bibles and pass them out for free in the school. So we've given out 300 Bibles to our to the students in the past couple years. You're walking down the hall and you see like all these orange Bibles everywhere and it's it's a great thing to see in a public school. I hear that, you know, we can be a light to others and we can be a good witness. That witness has led to tremendous growth. Now we're filling up over half the auditorium. Of the school's 600 students, 393 showed up at this meeting. It's become so big, it can attract outside talent to come to tiny New Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, like the skit guys. You're like old man ball, right? <laughs> featured stars at a Bible Club open house that recently brought a thousand people to Red Bank High. We're so loving, we're so accepting, and again, it's a small town, so we're all friends, we're all family, and once, you know, you're talking to somebody, you're saying about, oh, you know, God's been re really doing some things in my life, you know, that's an interest thing, and then it just starts spreading, it's the ripple effect. We know that it's the Spirit, like, leading us, and uh, it's amazing that what is he he's doing here at Red Bank. One thing the kids in Bible Club have realized is this isn't church, it's a club. You join a club because it centers in on things that are of interest to you, that you enjoy. And in this case, that just happens to be God. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Red Bank Valley High School in New Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. How appropriate that it would be in New Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem, <laughs> that's great. That's, that's awesome, yeah. a great move of God. Well, the girl in our next story had to grow up fast. She had to find a way to provide for herself and her family, and she was just 10 years old. After their parents died, 10-year-old Suk and her sisters were forced to make it on their own. They lived in this old abandoned grass hut in Cambodia. Every day became a struggle to survive. Life was so hard. We never had enough to eat. I also had to stop going to school. I felt hopeless. We had no relatives who could help us. A member of a Christian church there tried to find a place for Suk and her siblings to live. But the local orphanage was already too full, with no room for even one more child. A local pastor is the director there. We had no money to build a bigger place. We prayed for a new house every day. That's when CBN's Orphan's Promise offered to help. We built a new dormitory with one floor for the girls and another for boys. 
We also built a dining hall where the children get three meals every day. And the best news of all, the sisters were all able to come and live here after the buildings were finished. My life is so different now. They take very good care of us here. Without the help of CBN's often promise, we would not have been able to take in the 80 children who now live here. I'm glad that my sisters have enough food to eat and go to school. Most of all, I'm very happy that we're all able to live together as a family. Being able to stay together, being in a safe place with the provisions that you simply need to live, and then being given an education so that you have hope and a future. When you join the 700 Club, you're helping Orphans Promise provide that for kids all around the world. Will you stand with us in that? 700 Club membership is 65 cents a day. That's $20 a month, but you can change the world. We can all change the world when we link arms together. We're asking you to go to your phone right now and call. It's so simple. Our number is toll free. It's 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. You will have such satisfaction in knowing that you're making a difference in the lives of people who are in desperate situations. And so our way of saying thank you when you join the 700 Club is to send you this latest gift. It's called Life Beyond the Grave. These are real life accounts of people who have died. Some have gone on to heaven, some went on to hell. They came back, They're, they came back into their bodies and have all collected those stories. We've collected them here mm -hmm. to tell you what they experienced. It is startling, it is encouraging, it will bless you, it will also make you think clearly about how you're living During today. Last so, week's telephone, yes. it was just, uh, you know, Gordon uh, offered uh, five of those for everybody who pledged a thousand dollars and the response was just tremendous. Yeah. Well, was, it's a great opportunity. You know, sometimes yeah. you don't know how to share these things with people close to you. So when you join the Thousand Club, I should mention that five copies of this will go out, one for you, four for your friends, and I think it's uh, 700 Club Gold, which is Forty dollars a month, mm -hmm. three. So you have one for you and two to give to people that you care about. But it's a great opportunity to give them pause for thought. There isn't one person who doesn't wonder what happens after that's he exactly dies. That's exactly right. Some think, okay, I'm going to go and have soul sleep. I'm going to go on the ground. That's the end of it. But most of them think, well, this life after death, am I going to heaven or going to hell? They know that, and they want to know what is the secret. And so we've got real life people, and the, the in dramatic form. And uh, well, you always say one man's experience trumps another man's the, opinion, the and this is yeah, chock full right. of that's real life experiences. Exactly. You want All to get right. A hold of it. What's next? Okay, we've got some questions well, from our All right. our uh, online folks. Craig says, "Is it wrong for me to pray the God gives me a million dollar idea. Uh, why don't you pray, God, give me something that will help the world. Mm -hmm. And if you have something that will help the world, you might also make a million dollars, or maybe 10 million, or maybe 50 million. You know, but, so you're uh, talking about the focus being right on so that. Yeah, God, mm -hmm. I, I want to serve. I want to serve the world. Give me the concepts. And you know, I was reading about Solomon today, and the world nations came to him to hear the wisdom that God had put in his heart. So you're asking, God, give me wisdom. God is pleased with people who say, give me wisdom. Open the treasures of wisdom to me. Not give me a million dollar idea. You, you got it wrong. Ask for something that will be good for the people. All right, what else? Okay, this is an anonymous person who says, my bosses are lying to our clients and they want us to lie to make it seem like we are busy. We are all Christians, but they don't seem to care that they lie. What do I do? I think, uh, first of all, you should maybe get several of your people and go to the bosses and say, look, uh, we can make it if we're honest and if we have a reputation for honesty. And uh, if we're lying, it's gonna, we're going to find it out sooner or later and it'll ruin our business. And if they won't hear you, if they keep on doing it, then you, you ought to look for a job someplace else. You can't, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, Stay what fellowship has Christ with Belial, the Bible says. How can two uh, walk together unless they be agreed? You can't do it. Yeah. All right. This is Marge who asks, can Christians be possessed by demons? Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about that. I think if you have within you the Holy Spirit, if you've truly been born again and the Spirit of God is living within you, then a demon can't possess you. But can a demon oppress you, attack you? The answer is yes. It's like saying, I'm a Christian, but I went to sleep uh, out in the woods in a, 
ant climbed into my ear. Well, I mean, you know, it climbed. <laughs> it was one, of the, one of those things. Uh, so if you open yourself up to negative thoughts, the answer is you can be oppressed. But I don't think you can be possessed if you are truly born again. Okay, this person says, my husband drinks, especially on Saturday nights, and it really bothers me. I'm concerned that he may stop attending church if I mention it to the pastor. What should I do? Um, I tell you what, if, if he's having a few drinks on Saturday night, uh, you know, does he know the Lord or doesn't he? Um, uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, if, if he's not condemned in his heart, uh, the fact that he's taking a glass of wine or beer or something like that, I, I just don't see you bringing that up to the pastor. Well, also, it's a wonderful opportunity to see God solve yeah. this problem. Well, <laughs> but I mean, he's not an alcoholic. He's having a couple of drinks. Well, uh, the Bible says wine to gladden the heart of man. It's in the Bible. You know, Jesus, you know, turned water into wine. So. Alcoholic beverages per se are not necessarily evil, but the Bible says that uh, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. It can hurt you terribly. It can cause you all kinds of problems. But I don't think he ought to make that big a deal of it until, unless he's tending to alcoholism, unless he's overdoing it, unless he's slobbering Abusive drunk and doing silly things. If he has a drink or two, I mean, you know. Rejoice, that's the worst he's doing, but pray. This is Henry who says, I go to church and love God. I was thinking of joining a Masonic Lodge. Is it okay to be a Mason? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, if you look at the rituals of the Masonic Order, they are not Christian. And uh, there was a guy named Pike, and some people have disavowed Pike, but he wrote about what the Masonic Order believes. And according to Pike, uh, uh, the devil is uh, Lucifer is God, and they've reversed it entirely. And Jehovah God is the devil. Sometimes I don't think that shows up in the lower echelons no. of that. It's more the inner well, circle uh, the of the top. Well, the question is, was Pike to. really speaking for all the Masons? And many, many. I mean, good grief! George Washington was a Mason. Franklin was a Mason. Many of the leaders of our country were Masons. But the rituals are not Christian. They're not godly. You see, is it okay? I think no, it's not. Yeah, this is Annette who says, my son continues to get tattoos. Does the New Testament say anything about this? I'm not sure what I should tell him. Well, the Old Testament says a great deal about marking your body. This was a sign of he heathenism. Um, and uh, to, to uh, uh, mark your body and to cut yourself and to leave scars and marks of that nature, uh, that's, that's satanic. It's heathen practice. Why would your son do this? Uh, and you, you ought to say no. Besides, later on they're embarrassed and suddenly they've got all this stuff coming out of their shirts with all these funny looking things and <laughs> then they want to get them burned off. Oh dear, that's <laughs> disgusting. Well, we leave you with these words. How do you from, really feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to lay it on the line. Proverbs 428, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Thanks so much for being with us, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Tomorrow. Have you ever felt defeated? You're not alone. Now find out how to fight back using the laws of the secret kingdom. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. And if you do, you will win. Plus, they call him Mr. Pure Energy. Filipino pop sensation Gary Valenciano joins us live tomorrow on The 700 Club. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join The 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. When Kitty was abandoned by her parents, she went to live with her grandmother in the middle of a garbage dump. They ate scraps of food from the dump and tried not to get bitten by the rats. That's when you built them a new home and set up a small clothing business near the market for Kitty's grandmother. 
you rescued them from hunger and fear. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.